ke 6 vrk here let's take a look at the caa 500 the comet antenna analyzer let's take a look closer it has a frequency knob a band knob you can see switches on the side we'll go through that it has a nice screen i will turn that on this is new as you can see and it has SWR and ohms meter on the top and it has two connectors. I will remove the top so you can take a look. So it has two antenna connectors at the top. It has a regular PL259 and it has an N type connector. And those are the frequency ranges. One connector is for 1.8 to 300 megahertz. The other connector is for 300 to 500 megahertz. The center is a little hook which allows you to wear it around your neck. There it is. You can see the little hook that's on it. The antenna analyzer does not come with an adapter, so you may want to purchase one of these. I'll leave these in the link. It's a converter from this plug on here to a SL239, a regular UHF connector, and it goes on there just in case you have a different type of antenna. And you can also get another connector to convert this to end connectors if you have that. I do have another connector for that. On the other side, I do have another adapter, like this adapter, which allows you to put that on here and then you can use an end connector on the other side if you so wish to. Taking a look at the back of the analyzer, it has a plate in the back which has six AA batteries when you remove them. And I will show you one important switch that's important to put because it does allow you, through using the extended DC connector, you can see the range, it allows you to trickle charge some nickel metal hydride batteries. This is the inside of the back which holds the six AA. I'm using nickel metal hydride. Here's the switch to make sure you put this in the proper position on or off if you want to charge nickel metal hydride batteries. If you leave it on and plug it in and you're not, you will have batteries leak and you don't want to have that on this unit. So let's try this. Let's try this analyzer on this mobile antenna, which is 2 meter 440. This antenna also does not have a ground plane, but I'm very curious to see how it resonates. And let's plug it into the back. The one important thing about this analyzer, make sure something is always connected to the end you're using. Because if it sends out, if it tries to send out something to a non-connector, it can damage it. So make sure something's connected. So the trick to this is when you turn it on, turn I remember I'm doing 144 I'm doing 144 megahertz and 440 megahertz make sure to turn that band leave it off the uh, the other 200 megahertz part so let's turn it on as you can see that nice screen that's on there so I left it on 13 megahertz which is good. When you turn off the unit and you know which connector you're going to hook up to, leave it on the lower frequency so it's covered. Obviously it's not going to work on there. So let's take a good look at that screen. It's a really nice screen. So as I turn the band, let's turn it to 144. There. So we're on 2 meters. Now what you do is you turn the frequency until it shows fifty ohms. And the one reason why the match is not good is this antenna has no look at that. If you if you touch it, the match goes down. So let me put it on a plate of metal. I had to stick the mag mount on a piece of metal. Actually, it's on a vise inside the garage here. And 
and the match is better. But it's good for testing. So this is the goal. The goal, as you adjust the frequency, is to have it on 50 ohms, which is what your radio operates with, and this is the match. It is the standard uh, crosshair type. Here's what the meter shows. Now here's the neat part about this. We can turn it, and you can see the match on the meter as I turn the frequency you can see where it goes. So the match goes higher, lower frequency I go, and right about there, you can see the green line. That is where the lowest frequency, that is the lowest match. And I also didn't point out, you can see a battery strength up on the upper right corner, which is very useful. So that's good. That mobile antenna is on 144, 350, you know, 144, 300, and that works okay. It's showing the match. It's not really on the surface of a vehicle, but that's good. Here are some other functions it has. The first function that's very important with this is the automatic sweep function. So depending on what band you are on, so this is being set to 144 and you can see my match. At this case you can actually put it on any frequency, it doesn't matter. I can put it really high, it doesn't matter. What I'm going to do is hit the sweep if I hit sweep center, it will go into a graph. This is what I love about this. And it will automatically plot all the SWR readings. Let's try that. So I hit sweep center. And it will automatically plot a graph. And you can see the center is 146. So you can see where the match is, it's under 1.5. Now if I run that again, I'm going to touch the antenna and then let go. So let's hit sweep center again. Let me touch the antenna. The match is going to be really high. Look at that, it's at three. And then right when it gets near center, I'm going to let go. There, I let go. There, and it drops down. So that is an automatic graphing function. You can see it does 2 megahertz left, 2 megahertz right of 146 megahertz. Very, very useful function. So now let's set, now let's try manual mode. What you do is you turn on the graph and let's set, this is where you want the center of the frequency to be. So for this case, I'm going to set the knob up there, up in the center, because we have the left, I mean the left and the right, left and the right. Let's set it, let's set it for center. So it's about 146, because that will show up on it. So if you hit sweep center, you'll see 146. And here you can set that. So I'm going to leave it at 146, kind of close to there sweep center, so we're at 146. Now, to make it do its plot, hit AP band off, and don't spin it too fast, do it slow. If you do it too fast, it'll do strange things. There we go, see, and it's plotting as I spin it to the left. It's plotting one megahertz that way, look, and I'm turning it back the other way, I'm filling in the holes. And now, Oh, I did it too fast. See, it'll it'll fill it in, which is very very useful. There, so now you can see the nice little graph it drew. So I have an idea. Let's do sweep set. Let's try a lower one. Let's try one thirty nine. 
So we hit that, and as you notice, 139, it rounds it up to 140. That's the center. And this is going one megahertz up, one megahertz down. I'm gonna try the center of it. Let's see what that does. Let's hit, let's start the graph. We're gonna hit EP off bandwidth. So I go to the right. Okay, let me turn it slowly the other way. Sometimes if you if you offshoot it, I'm gonna keep turning till you see it. It won't show up because it's off the graph. There we go. Look at that. It's coming in. It's gonna show half the graph, but that's okay. So as you notice, by 140 the SWR is starting to climb. And that is to the end of my range on here. Something else I discovered on this. If you if you do sweep and we bring the band down one, look at the amount we have. I'm gonna put it in the center. That's interesting. Look at the ranges left and right, eleven megahertz. Let's try this. I'm gonna start the uh, graph again. Let's see what it does to the right. Oh, look at that, there we go. To the right, it's very high, and look at that, it goes down. Near 144 megahertz. Now, if I go back the other way, look at the position of the knob. If I go back the other way, what's it going to do? If I go back the other way, Looks like it just fills in the graph, and then it goes off the graph. So I still have room to turn this knob, but it's off the graph. It's on the other side. Here's the other good thing about this. If you hit this again, it now changes the color of the graph. You see that little blue square? See, it draws blue. But let me show you actually what that's for. You can see different settings. Now I just overdrew the other graph. Let's pull the antenna off of its let's pull the antenna off of its metal base. Now this match is going to be very high. So let's try this again with uh, let's try another color. Now it made it green. Oh, look at that. There we go. See? It draws. It's a very high match. And I'm still turning. I still have some ways to go. Now you can see different matches. That's without the metal. Now you can see the graph like that. So that is the function, how this meter works. And it is a great meter, I like it, and I'm going to be putting some more videos because I want to show it how you program, or actually how you set the SWR on a buddy pole. That's going to be a lot of fun. But I wanted to give you a basic description, basic use of this meter. It's a very nice meter. Uh, I like the uh, double, I love the uh, double needles on it useful just like a just like a regular SWR meter but this graph is really nice and if I turn off the graph with this button you get you still get a good display of what's going on if I turn it and bring it down you can see the SWR go down it's a great little it's a great little device so I thought I'd give you a nice tour of this SWR analyzer and I hope you have fun with it. I'll leave you a link. One of the most important things is to have fun and do a lot of learning and antenna building. That helps a lot. Antennas are one of the most important things. So have fun with the meter and 73s. If you like the video, feel free to give us a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel as I will be posting a lot of all different videos of multiple products and also the various tools. And remember, 73s from KE6VRK.